praise God from whom all blessings flow. We thank God for our bishop, Reverend Mike West Molden, who's with us tonight. Amen.
to the bishop, right, Reverend Michael S. Moden, presiding bishop of the first, I mean the second and third and fifth Episcopal districts, and to his wife, Evangelist Dr. Jane Moden, to Reverend Dr. Adolphus Scott, my father and pastor of this church, to my beautiful aunt, Reverend Sheila Davis, to my family that came up to support me, thank you. And to all other ministers, to the store board, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when I was preparing for this, um, my dad, my brother that was on the drums, they was asking me, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And I'm like, I'm almost ready, but I, I, I don't know, I just, I just can't get it together. And I found out the reason why I couldn't get it together is because I had to preach this to myself first. Amen. So I found myself looking at the story of the prodigal son. Or as the Bible says too, the lost son. Now, he wanted his inheritance. So he went to his father and got it. And found himself backslid in the wind, uh, in the wilderness. Now, when he was in the wilderness, it says that he couldn't get nothing to eat. Now back in this time, the Jews didn't eat pig. It was too unclean. So he wasn't eating. And he came to a census and said, I could be eating if I were to stay home. So I focused on the 24th verse. That was the most important that stuck out to me. It says, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. In this parable, Jesus was letting the people of that day and age, as well as us today, that although sometimes we find ourselves lost and strayed from him, that if, <laughs> if we come back to him, we will be welcomed back to eternal life. Amen. How? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Can you please turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, when you have a say amen. Amen. Still here a few pages. Amen. Chapter 2, 1 through 5. Amen. Amen. As for you, you were dead in your transgression and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. Amen. It is by grace you have been saved. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, right now, I ask that you fill my heart with love for your people, dear Lord. I ask that you just increase in me, dear Lord, and reduce confidence in myself, but let me be confident in Christ Jesus. I ask that you just speak through me, Lord. Control my tongue, control my mind. Dear Lord, use me so that someone may be saved, set free, or healed by the speaking of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I know a lot of us are too holy to admit that we all share traits of the prodigal son. How? Glad you asked again. We spend time trying to fit in. And that's all of us at work. You see employees, employers, they do what they want, 
So you think, because you work with them and they do what they want, you can do what you want. We play church and find time to do everything we want, but nothing the Father God asks of us. We worry and become afraid of what people might say about us. Oh, he a hypocrite. He a hypocrite. We pay no mind to the Father God, worried about what's popular, saying things like, I'm young, I still got time. We step out on our own understanding and not on the faith. This is for my generation. We want to party all the time, living young, wild, and free. We be, we, we're being arrogant, we're lacking patience, and want to try everything our way. My brothers and my sisters, our Father who are in heaven has the best inheritance for us, which is eternal life. Don't get confused. God don't owe us anything. Technically, we owe God our life and to commit to Him and serve Him. Well, that don't sound easy, does it? Don't sound easy at all. Commit to God. Don't sound easy. Didn't sound easy to me, so I took me so long. That's why I was running. <laughs> Nothing that comes easy is worth having. Amen. Nothing. So, when we spend time trying to fit in, we need to remember God clearly made us to stand out. When we're too busy playing church and finding time to do everything we want, but nothing that the Father asks of us, we need to remember every day we're spared of His wrath by grace. When we worry about and become afraid of what people might say, we need to remember the only one that we need to fear is God. When we pay no mind to the Father, worrying about what's popular, saying things like, we're too young, we still have time, we need to remember that God is the end and He's the beginning. When we step out on our own understanding and faith, we need to remember a man shall reap what he sows. When we want to party all the time, living young, wild, and free, we need to remember only what you do for Christ shall last. When we're arrogant, we need to remember we were fearfully and wonderfully made in his image so our light can shine before others so they can glorify him. When we lack patience, and want everything our way, we need to remember that we need to be completely humble and gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. Yeah. See, it made it hard because I had to preach this to myself. I definitely didn't want to hear the part about partying. I didn't want to hear that at all. I didn't want to. But I had to realize that I could party all I want, but that ain't gonna last. It's going to kill me. But if I follow God, I get eternal life. <laughs> and we'll remember in all of this, we still find ourselves falling short. Still find ourselves falling short. Don't let that discourage you. For in his word, he tells us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. The law was brought in so that the trespass may increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reason to be discouraged and we have no excuses. My brothers and my sisters, if you feel like the prodigal son today, if you feel like you strayed away from home, the Father has welcomed you back with open arms. The world has nothing to offer us. What seems for now won't last. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless you and may have a smile upon you.
Lord today that if we found ourselves straight, found ourselves off course, found ourselves in the wrong direction, that God the Father loves us and that His grace abounds. We heard that this is a hospital, that Jesus came to those who are sick. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you have not received him. You have not asked him to be your Lord and Savior. You have not come to a saving knowledge. You have not been set free. Today is your day. You can come back home just as the prodigal son came back home. Is there one today? Is there one? Maybe you desire prayer today. The altar is open for prayer. The altar is open for prayer. I'm going to ask my good friend, Reverend Robert Clegg to come at this time and pray for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Dearly, Father, precious and God, we come again, O oh Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for life, health, and strength. And then we thank you for the calling that you put on this heart. And thank you for using it to the glory to God. Dearly, Father, we come praying, Jesus, because we understand that there's power in Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's forgiveness in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we come, Lord, in, the, in that name, because it's only by that name that we can be saved. So, Lord, we just come, the Heavenly Father, believing tonight that whatever our, whatever's in our heart, or the desires of our heart, you already fixed it, the Heavenly Father. We're praying for those who are around this altar, Lord. You know exactly what we're going through. You know exactly what each and every, each and every individual what's going on in their lives, oh Lord. You know what hurts us. You know what frustrates us. You know what you know what it uh, takes our peace away, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, but we understand, oh Lord, that while we're going through these things, all things are working together for the good of them that love you, called according to your purpose. So right now, dear Heavenly Father, no matter what's going on, no matter how dark it is, we know you're the light of the world. We understand no matter how dry it gets, you are the living water. So, Lord, we come to you tonight, O oh Lord, believing, O oh Lord, and understanding, O oh Lord, that while we're trying to figure it out, you've already worked it out. So build our faith, O oh Lord. Build our faith. Build our trust. That no matter what's going on, we still believe that you love us so much that you would not put more on us than what we can bear. Because you care for us, oh Lord. So right now, dear Heavenly Father, renew our joy, renew our peace, renew our love, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. That when we get off our knees, oh Lord, when we go out tonight, Lord, when we are home by ourselves, oh Lord, we know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, oh Lord. So right now, Lord, we count it victory, Lord. No matter what devil try to come against us, no matter what the demons try to do, we got victory in the name of Jesus. So right now, Lord, we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout right now, Lord. So right now, dear Heavenly Father, we're going to say glory to your name. Right now, Lord, we're going to shout hallelujah to your name. Because we understand that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So right now, Lord, we believe, oh Lord, that you're by our side. We believe, oh Lord, you've already worked it out. We believe, oh Lord, that you'll take the burdens off our shoulders. So right now, Lord, we're going to make the devil mad, oh Lord. We're not going to stay sad, oh Lord, but we're going to open our minds. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We say amen. 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 And thank God. time as John gives us a couple of selections. I'm going to ask the, the steward board be the demand of the stewards will meet at this time. We ask everyone to sing along uh, with John as we meet uh, concerning Brother Zachary's process.